Good afternoon, children. As we have completed the chapters in Flamingo, we are moving forward to Vistas, and our next chapter is Should Wizard Hit Mommy? by John Updike. John Hoyer Updike was an American novelist, poet, short story writer, art and literary critic. His most famous work is his Rabbit series. His fiction is focused on the concerns, passions and sufferings of average American. He is considered one of the great American writers of his time. Updike has a style which is rich and unusual and sometimes arcane vocabulary is conveyed through the eyes of a wry, intelligent, authorial voice. He describes the physical world in a realist condition and tradition. So today we are going to learn a story by the name Should Wizard Hit Mommy. A wizard is someone who is having magical powers and mommy means mom. The story deals with certain moral issues and with the adult complexes that clash with childish innocence. Father Jack tells stories to his daughter Jo influenced by his own childhood experiences, failures and complexes. On the other hand, his daughter lives in her own world of fantasy and doesn't want to come out of it. She feels the pain of being rejected by the playmates when Roger Skunk is rejected due to his bad smell. The story highlights the point that the children also have their egos, identities, views and attitude. The ending of the story also highlights the fact that the children must understand that one must accept one's identity and gracefully accept the way we are created by God. So children, actually it's a story within a story. It is uh, the narration mode is in the form of a father telling his daughter a story. And that story also we are having as a subplot, okay? So it's a story within a story. Now let's read the story. Here is a story about the world view of a little child and the difficult moral question she raises during the story session with her father. Now let's find out the story. In the evenings and for Saturday naps like today's, Jack told his daughter Jo a story out of his head. This custom begun when she was two, was itself now nearly two years old, and his head felt empty. Each new story was a slight variation of a basic tale. A small creature usually named Roger. Roger Fish, Roger Squirrel, Roger Chipmunk had some problem and went with it to the wise old owl. The owl told him to go to the wizard and the wizard performed a magic spell that solved the problem. Demanding in payment a number of pennies greater than the number that Roger creature had but in the same breath directing the animal to a place where the extra pennies could be found. Then Roger was so happy he played many games with other creatures and went home to his mother just in time to hear the train whistle that brought his daddy home from Boston. So in the introduction itself, uh, we are introduced to the father character who is Jack and Jack has the habit of telling stories to his daughter. The daughter's name is Jo and the story had a very usual pattern. The character's names will be Roger always and the creatures may vary. Sometimes it may be a fish, a squirrel and all. So the main character's name was Roger. And this character will be facing a problem and he will be going to a wise old owl and the owl will send to him 
to the wizard and the wizard will solve the problem with a magic spell for that he may demand some amount of money and the roger creature will not be having that money and he will lead him to a well from where he can find the extra penny so this was the usual pattern of the stories and it started when jo was 2 days okay and now she is 2 years old and the roger creature will be back at home just in time when his father returns from boston so that was the usual pattern of the story of jack Jack described the supper and the story was over. Walking his way through this scheme was especially fatiguing on Saturday because Joe never fell asleep in naps anymore and knowing this made the ride seem futile. The little girl not so little anymore the bumps her feet made under the covers were half way down the bed. their big double bed that they let her in for naps and when she was sick had at last arranged herself and from the way her fat face deep in the pillow shone in the sunlight sifting through the drawn shades it did not seem fantastic that some magic would occur and she would take her nap already asleep with his bottle jack asked who shall the story be about today Roger Jo squeezed her eyes shut and smiled to be thinking she was thinking her eyes opened her mother's blue skunk she said firmly a new animal they must talk about skunks at nursery school having a fresh hero momentarily stirred jack to creative enthusiasm all right he said once upon a time in the deep dark woods there was a tiny little creature by the name of Roger skunk and he smelled very bad yes joe said he smelled so bad that none of the other little woodland creatures would play with him joe looked at him solemnly he had in foreseen this whenever he would go out to play jack continued with zest remembering certain humiliations of his own childhood all of the other tiny animals would cry oh here comes roger stingy stunk and they would run away and roger skunk would stand there all alone and two little round tears would fall from his eyes the corners of joe's mouth drooped down and her lower lip bent forward as he traced with a forefinger along the side of her nose the course of one of roger skunk's tears won't he see the owl she asked in a high and faintly roughened voice Sitting on the bed beside her, Jack felt the covers tug as her legs swished tensely. He was pleased with this. So today also, as it was Saturday, it was time for Jack to tell some story to make Joe to sleep. So it was a very difficult task nowadays because Joe was no more a little child, and she was two years old, and uh, it was very uh, difficult to make her sleep. But anyways Jack uh, had started the task of telling the story and this time it was Roger Skunk and what was the problem confronted by the skunk actually skunk is a creature who used to have a bad smell and whenever this Roger Skunk child used to go and play the other playmates would run away from him because of the bad smell and Jack is uh, recollecting the bad childhood experiences and humiliations he had through this character of Roger Skunk and jo felt so much sympathetic about the Roger Skunk that she is enquiring that whether Roger will see the wise old to solve the problem and jack was so pleased to see her being getting so involved in the story he was telling her something true something she must know and had no wish to hurry on but downstairs a chair scraped and he realized he must get down to help claire paint the living room woodwork well he walked along very sadly and came to a very big tree and in the tip top of the tree was an enormous wise old owl good mr owl roger skunk said all the other little animals run away from me 
because I smell so bad. So you do, the old said, very, very bad. What can I do? Roger Skunk said, and he cried very hard. The wizard, the wizard, Joe shouted, and sat right up, and a little golden book spilled from the bed. Now, Joe, Daddy is telling the story. Do you want to tell Daddy the story? No, you, me. Then lie down and be sleepy. Her head relapsed onto the pillow, and she said, Out of your head. Well, the owl thought and thought. At last, he said, Why don't you go to see the wizard? Daddy, what? Are magic spells real? This was a new face just this last month, a reality face. When he told her spiders eat bugs, she turned to her mother and asked, Do they really? And when Claire told her God was in the sky and all around them, she turned to her father and insisted with a sly yet eager smile. Is he really? They are real in stories, Jack answered curtly. She had made him miss a beat in the narrative. The old said, Go through the dark woods, under the apple trees, into the swamp, over the creek. What's a creek? Okay, now we have uh, the story being preceded by Jack. Because uh, Joe was very eagerly involved in the story. So Jack wanted her to listen very carefully. So she, he was not rushing on. Now the Roger Skunk was walking so sadly. And he came to a very big tree. And on top of it there was an old owl. And Roger Skunk told Mr. Owl that all the other little animals run away from him because of his bad smell. Now the owl also agreed that he smells so bad. Now Joe started shouting, the wizard, the wizard. Now Jack got a little bit irritated and he asked her whether she is telling him the story or she wants the father to tell her the story. Now Joe insisted that the father will tell the story. In between we are introduced to a character, Claire. Actually, Claire is Joe's mother and wife of Mr. Jack. And she is busy painting the wooden works in the living room. Actually, Jack wishes to go and help her. But he is trapped in the storytelling session with Joe. Now, the Jack is continuing with the story. And he said that the Roger Skunk was led to a wizard by the owl. And now Joe again comes up with a question, are magic spells real? Now Jack feels so much irritated with these questions. So he said that yes, magic spells are real. And the owl is leading the way for the Roger Skunk to the wizard. And he asked him to go through the dark woods, under the apple trees, into the swamp, the wetlands, over the creek. Now, Joe had another question. What's a creek? It's very usual, okay, when you say the stories to your youngsters, to your siblings and all, they have a lot of questions to the story. And you will always end up saying that there is no question in a story because it is just a story. A little river. So, what's a creek? A little river. Over the creek and there will be the wizard's house. And that is the way... Roger Skunk went and pretty soon he came to a little white house and he rapped on the door. Jack rapped on the window slit and under the covers Joe's tall figure clenched in an infantile thrill. And then a tiny little old man came out with a long white beard and a pointed blue hat and said, eh, What's this? What you want? You smell awful. The wizard's voice was one of Jack's own favorite efforts. He did it by scrunching up his face and somehow whining through his eyes, which felt for the internal roomy. He felt being an old man suited him. 